I kept running across compelling evidence and credible experts saying that the secret agenda of the banking elite is nothing less than total global domination. At first, I resisted the idea, but I was committed to finding out what was keeping us from thriving, no matter where it might lead. One night I woke up at 3 a.m. with the burning question, if this small group wanted to dominate the entire world, what would they need to control to accomplish it? I jumped out of bed and started making a list. First and foremost, they'd have to control money, and they do. Controlling money allows them to run everything else. They'd need to control energy, and they do. They already control big agriculture and world trade. They're buying up water supplies worldwide. They've got health in their pocket, and they're trying to suppress natural alternatives. Mainly, they'd have to control what information we'd get and how we'd react to it. In America, the internet, our greatest tool for communication and grassroots organizing, is currently not controlled or censored. But its open status is being attacked from all sides. Governments, corporations, and the United Nations are all attempting to take control. For complete domination, dissent has to be controlled. They'd need to take away our rights, spy on ordinary citizens, and track every aspect of our lives. As the day dawned, I knew that a powerful elite had almost everything set up to rule the world. And I had the frightening realization that Big Brother is not just coming, he's here now. We are already in the Matrix, so how do we get out? To envision that, I realized I needed to discover what their ruling structure looks like and how it works. A relatively small group of families, especially the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, Morgans, and Carnegies, along with the Harrimans, the Schiffs, and the Warburgs, have been leading the controlling elite in the West for generations. I'm not implying that every individual in these families is aware of or active in the global domination agenda. However, I'm convinced the heads of these dynasties control the corporate and banking interests that carry out the sinister scheme that is destroying so many lives. Those secretly driving the agenda have been known by many names. Leaked reports confirm that they meet throughout the world behind closed doors to discuss their agenda. Then, like clockwork, their plans begin to show up in the media, finance, corporate, government, and military arenas. Of course, not everyone involved in these groups is in on the decision-making. There is a hierarchy of knowledge and participation. One of the primary symbols of the controlling elite is the all-seeing eye. It's on the dollar bill. It's on the American mass surveillance system initially called Total Information Awareness. It's on the British intelligence agency MI5. And it even oversees the Supreme Court complex in Israel, designed and funded entirely by the Rothschilds. I believe they've taken the majestic image of the Cheops Pyramid and its legendary metallic capstone and perverted the meaning to represent those at the top being able to track and control all those under them. One of the painful ways this information has been used is by people who want to promote anti-Semitism. They wrongly call this a Jewish agenda and continue the ongoing racism that undermines and destroys so many lives. Let me be clear, this is definitely not a Jewish agenda. It's been documented that central bankers even funded both sides of World War II as well as some of the corporations associated with Hitler's atrocities against the Jews. Since these people have more money than their families would need for generations, and since they have the power to create money, I don't believe wealth is their end goal. After you have all the material things that you could possibly want in life, what is left to excite you? And for many people, the answer is power, global power. They became intellectually elite. They began to think that they had a plan that was better than anybody else's plan. They got the idea that freedom is dangerous. If you give people freedom, you know what? They're probably not going to use it wisely like we think they should. 
We are smarter than they are. And for their own good, we should rule them. As I came to accept the idea of a ruling elite planning for total global domination, I began to hear these same people actually talking more boldly and publicly about it. Only they call it the New World Order. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this New World Order. It is a New World Order with significantly different and radically new challenges. A New World Order can be created. It's a great opportunity. Given the condition of our world, a new world order can sound like a great idea. But I had to distinguish between what I was discovering about global domination, a one world government run by an elite few, and the reality of our global interconnectedness, which is the realization that at a fundamental and even spiritual level, we are not separate, we are all connected. But the agenda for global domination is really the exact opposite. It's a divide and conquer strategy to keep us all pitted against each other, thinking that it's the Democrats or Republicans, the liberals or conservatives who are the problem, when both parties are ultimately serving the same plan. I believe we're heading toward a totalitarian world authority, actually a military dictatorship, run by a tiny elite who have all the power and make all the rules. If they succeed, there'll be nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Think about it. The whole notion of conspiracy has been so ridiculed that it's socially challenging just to consider it. And there's always a reasonable sounding story to explain any one incident on its own. I personally used to try to justify how the same people consistently ended up with more money and more control by thinking they must just be taking advantage of the situation but not actually causing it. But after nearly a decade of putting the issues and the evidence together, I am convinced it is not random and that a few very powerful banking elite families and their political and corporate partners do have an agenda to dominate and control the rest of us. Once I got the reality and the scope of the agenda, I really had to think how much do I want to know about this? Do I want to focus on the worst of what human beings are capable of? I decided it is worth knowing who these people are and how their organizations operate because on the other side of the rage and the sadness are clarity and strength, the power we have to focus our efforts effectively now that we understand what's really going on. The greatest prison that people live in is the fear of what other people think. What happened to me as a result of all the ridicule I went through is that I stepped out of the fear of what other people thought and it's only when you do it that you realize what a prison you lived in before and what it gave me um, was a personal understanding of how easy it is for a few to control the many all you have to do is dictate the norms in society what is considered right and wrong, moral and immoral, good and bad, sane and insane, possible and impossible. And you build what I call a hassle-free zone. And if you live your life within that zone of perception, belief, and what you say and think, then people will leave you alone because you're normal. Once you step out of that pen and you start to express your uniqueness, what the Illuminati have created is a whole human population of prison warders who are jumping on those that are stepping out of the norm. Um, and, and it's interesting, when you get to the edge of that hassle-free zone in what you say and you think, you're not thinking, if I do, what about the head of the World Bank? What's he going to say if I do this? No. We're saying, what will my mother think? What about the guys down the bar and the people at work? What will they say? And what, what the Illuminati have done by creating the norms, they have created an absolute army of people to impose those norms on each other.